So as we know, uh, true crime has become probably one of the most popular genres in general across the culture industry, if not the most popular genre. In particular, you see a lot of uh, true crime documentaries being produced on Netflix, and you also have quite a few highly popular uh, true crime podcasts. This is not... I, I personally don't really go for that sort of thing. I can't really watch TV other than comedies just because I can't invest in a television program longer than, you know, the 20 minutes of a uh, comedy show. Um, but uh, true crime is definitely one of the most popular genres out there, and it's really what the House of Netflix has, like, put so much of its... Um, it's, it's what accounts for so much of the foundation of the House of Netflix. Um, so I was thinking about that recently, and was thinking about uh, Susan Sontag and how she writes about... Um, the depiction of violence in photography. She's talking specifically about um, still photography, but I think the same goes for any kind of uh, like violence as depicted in any sort of a cultural medium. It, not necessarily photography, but you know, moving images as well as a sound documentary. I think are all fair game to be criticized in these terms that she lays out. And one of her uh, main uh, points in her essay series on photography is that um, the consumption of violent, uh, violence in images really gets into this kind of um, voyeuristic tendency, like a kind of sick fascination, for better or for worse, that human beings possess. Um, and at the same time, there's a kind of passivity involved in consuming photography um, because, you know, you're like like in a kind of abject position in front of the medium. You're not really like uh, engaging it. You're not, you're, it's kind of like unfolding upon you. You're not like uh, participating in that unfolding really. Unlike, you know, reading a book, for example, I think it's like a less passive form of, uh, you know, culture just because, like, it is up to the reader to, uh, like, construct the sentences in their own mind and to, like, get meaning out of it, etc. Whereas, you know, especially, like, it's, it's especially true in the case of uh, cinema, which is, like, the most passive of all the art forms because, like, you are really just, like, sitting there and like the whole thing is unfolding before you and like the formal techniques of the medium are all directed towards like making the image as easily legible as possible. So like you don't have to do any kind of interpretation to put together a like big Hollywood movie. Like it, it is so obvious and it's always moving, it's always propelling you forward. Like is, is truly the most passive form of entertainment. And um, so photography, violent photography, violence in photography really gets at those two um, human tendencies of like being uh, voyeuristically fascinated by violence and then you know you have like the, the passive consumption of the image. And I think um, it is, like, Sontag makes the argument that, like, that, uh, that intersection is kind of um, used to absolve the spectator of the photograph of their complicity in, like, the presence and existence of a uh, photograph that depicts violence. Um, I'll talk about that in a minute. So... As I've said, Netflix and uh, the culture industry produce so many images of violence, especially in this, uh, like, really, I mean, it's not a new form, true crime, but it's really, like, um, burgeoning and, like, being developed in a way that it never has in history. Um, and it's, like, a very particular type 
of violence. Like it's not the violence of like a big action movie or whatever. It's like it's like the violence of like um, it's it's documentary violence, violence that you can imagine that you're compelled to imagine is happening to real people and like is real. It's realistic violence. Um, so true crime and like the whole culture industry around true crime, it is it lies at the intersection of uh, voyeuristic consumption and you know passive consumption of images, um, which I think I mean the the point that I'm trying to make here is that it that uh, explains why true crime has really taken off as such a popular form. And the point that I want to make is that there's like a, there's an ethical dilemma involved in um, producing and consuming true crime. Um, so obviously you have these like huge empires like Netflix that are like so dependent on true crime and they like discovered, I guess, that uh, like human beings have this sick fascination with violence. I, mean, I, I don't say sick in a kind of judgmental term. I, I'm really not trying to uh, place a value judgment on the human fascination with violence. It is, it is like natural or not, whatever. Can't really say whether or not any aspect of the human being is natural because their environment is so unnatural. But the point is that, um, like, it is being harnessed by a mode of production that is deeply unnatural, which is the capitalist mode of production. It has latched itself onto this thing that humans love, for better or for worse, which is images of violence. And it is, like, uh, just like the class relation within capitalism, it is self-reproducing. It's like a cycle where uh, like the, the viewer of these true crime documentaries is uh, like getting their, their voyeuristic fix from, their, uh, from the violence depicted. Sorry, sounds like somebody just got home. But it's not. They're, they're getting their fix, and it is at the same time, as with any kind of fix, it is creating the need for uh, more. So capitalism has really like uh, latched on to true crime as a way of um, like producing more surplus value for itself. But as a side effect, it is producing a society and a culture. <laughs> that is like normalizing violence to really an unprecedented degree. Like people are worry, worried about video games and like action movies like affecting uh, people's brains, but like true crime is so obviously more sinister of a cultural form. Like it, like these like documentary um, these documentaries of like real violence depicted. Uh, like between like real people and like produced at such a degree of technical excellence and at such an alarming rate it's like creating people who are hungry for that type of content who want more and more and are therefore there there is like a market for producing more and more and uh, you know it's, it's like a self perpetuating uh, machine as as capitalism always is, and it's it's really like um, uh, like the the viewer is just in this passive role where they don't understand that there is like an ethical question involved in their participation of that media, both in market terms of supply and demand. Like the more that people consume this type of content the more there's going to be an imperative for the content producers to make that type of content. And at the same time, um, you know, there, 
like the the viewer because of their passive consumption, like the the passive nature in which these types of media are consumed, um, they are like not uh, they're in a position where they can like easily uh, like not think about how they are involved in the violence that is being depicted, how they are perpetuating it, how they are creating space for it, how they are you know bringing it into being. Um, so that's that's all I want to say. Just it's, it's very suspicious. It's very alarming to me that. Uh, like there, there's such a culture of violence, of like really like uh, sick violence at that, and there, there's so much capital behind it because like you know the the more capital like lines up behind something, behind some kind of a commodity, the m the harder it is to ever do away with that kind of commodity. The, the more it becomes like entrenched and ingrained into society and culture, so very suspicious developments.